Okay. Okay, so you should have gone ahead and gotten that notification that uh, we started recording. What we're going to spend our time on today, and for those of you who missed last week, we took the first session, the first of our weekly stop procrastinating section to dive in to KB Core and to just sort of, you know, say, okay, now is the time. We've sort of been taking advantage of a market where, you know, a lot of things, um, a lot of clients, a lot of closings happen without us having to seek them out. Um, now we have to make sure that we're getting these systems in place so that we can identify clients, capture clients, and leverage technology in the best possible way to help our business. So that's what KB Core is about. Last week, we talked about how to get started, how to activate your account. If you haven't done that, then let's start from the beginning and how to set up your profile, some very important components of your profile. Now, what we're going to spend our time on today is talking about things that you can do with your website. Remember, website is a big component of your KV Core account, and I'll go back and forth and, and show you mine frequently as we go through some of our conversation today. So this website is included with KV Core if you are an EXP agent, which means it's included in your $85 monthly fee. Remember that we are in a tech-heavy world. Right. And so much of what you do, what do you do when you're trying to um, sort of interview a client or scope out a client? Um, what do I do when I'm interviewing a new employee? I go to the Internet and see what kind of um, web footprint that individual has. Well, expect that potential clients are going to do the same about you. So your social media, your website are just a couple of the ways that they're going to sort of try to get a sense of your background, your personality, and whether there might be a good fit for them and for you. So I encourage you not to do everything necessarily that we go over today, but at least to think of some of the things that are pertinent to you, that you can personalize your site and make it more of a reflection of you and less a cookie cutter template, okay? So when you're in KV Core, what I suggest you do before you start making any changes or looking at any settings is you go up to your profile and you click on your website here, um, this little globe icon. When you do that, it's going to open a second window, okay, with your website. That way it's going to make it easy. When we make changes to our settings here from the KV Core site, we can go and refresh our website and see those changes in real time, okay? That way, if you don't like something, you can change it back, change another color scheme, whatever the case may be. I do just want to take a quick second before we dive into the details of this to show you a couple of different versions. I'm taking the liberty of sharing a couple of websites uh, of team members. And um, Laura, I think I saw that you're here, so I hope it's okay. I, I'm using one of yours as an example um, of some team members that have um, added some customization and personalization to their sites. Um, so here's another look from Gail. Um, Gail was very interested in the black and white, using black and white logo, black and white in her signage and her business cards and all of her marketing materials. So we did some things with her site to help build on that black and white. So you'll notice some of the um, images, the way that the tiles are set up on the website, the black and white coming through in testimonials. So you can just get a general sense of the theme, okay? And then Laura, Laura um, has a slightly different look. She went with, and I think she's kind of maybe closer to my end of things where I like the warm and fuzzy. So images are designed to sort of give you that home sweet home feel, okay? And you'll notice a, a different look, the tiles that Laura has chosen and what she features on her website, okay? So these are all different things that you can do to, again, personalize to you. So let's head over to our KV Core dashboard, where we're going to spend our time today. If you go on the left-hand side, we're going to be under Web and IDFs, and we're going to go to the Website Manager. From there, you'll see a place called Website Settings. There's a ton of stuff here under Website Settings, and this is where we are going to spend um, a good chunk of our hour, hour and 15 today, okay? If you have a team site, if you are a team leader that's somehow catching 
this recording, you'll just want to make sure that you are working in the correct site, okay? And you can toggle between your team site and your individual site. But for most of you here, I'm sure that you're, you're just focused on your individual site. So those are the settings that you'll be looking at. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you with template, there are a couple of options that you have for the standard template and organization of your website. I've been told in multiple channels that foundation has glitches. So I wouldn't even go down that path. You should be defaulting to hero. I suggest you just stay on hero, okay? As you scroll down through these general settings, you're gonna next see that you have the ability to change the widget settings on your site. So if you take a look at some things happening here, look at my widgets, how I have the widget with the click button on one side and a corresponding image on the opposite side. I, I think a lot of what you see on my site here translates to the default that a lot of um, KB Core users start with before you make any custom changes. If you wanted to see how different features look, you can just click on this box. Let's say I wanted to see what um, standard looked like. Okay, I can just select standard. I can hit save. It's going to ask me to verify that I want to save my changes. You'll get your little notification in the bottom left hand corner. Now look what happens again. If I have my website open, I toggle over to it and just hit the refresh button. Give it about 10 seconds to refresh. And now look how it has changed. I'm not looking at the top piece, but I'm looking at these widget components. Look at how it has changed the widget selections and also the layout, okay? I decided I didn't like it, or maybe I liked where I was better before. I can simply just go back to it, save it again, toggle back to my site and refresh. And once I refresh, there I go, back to where I was 60 seconds ago. Okay, so it's very easy. And so many of the features here are very easy to change and um, experiment with. So don't be intimidated. You don't have to know code or be an expert in website builds to be able to work through these features in KB Core. Um, we're not going to talk about the site editor now. I'm going to talk about that briefly at the end. Um, with some of this additional customization, because once we start talking about the site editor, we're starting to get into maybe like level 201. Right now we're in level 101. We're just trying to get started. Okay. The other thing that you can do here is you can toggle on or off to stretch your widgets in this part of your homepage across the entire screen, or you can sh shrink them so that you have borders on the left and the right side. And that's simply a toggle back and forth. Okay. If we keep scrolling down, you'll notice the next section is themes. Themes is basically going to be your color scheme for your site. Um, I like to go, as I sort of alluded to in the beginning, I'm kind of a warm and fuzzy. So if you take a look at some of the images on my site, and if I keep refreshing it, you'll see that I have multiple images at the top of my screen. But you'll see I kind of go for that um, warm and fuzzy feel. I tend to favor a lot of uh, warm colors too beiges, um, browns, grays, and soft blues. So for me, for my personality and for my theme, if you will, I sort of um, follow those colors here in deep blue. But look at how many options there are to choose from with color schemes. So um, most people, if you just you know click through and test a few things out, you're gonna find something there that you like. Um, I mentioned in Gail's case, liking the black and white. She went with, um, I think hers was actually, she chose black um, for her um, template theme, okay? But you can you can literally, like, let's just say I wanted to go really crazy bold and go for Red Torch and save it. You'll get that notification. And then you can just come right over to the site and refresh it. And notice, you'll see what has changed, right? It jumps out at you pretty quick how the colors that were sort of a very muted blue, gray have now gone to red, okay? That is a torch red too. That's a lipstick red right there. So we're gonna change that right back. Um, so I'm gonna just easily go right back to deep blue. Super simple. So these are things that, there, you know, there's no wrong answer. It's just gonna be about 
what is a reflection of you and play around with it, have some fun. The other thing that I was sort of just mentioning is that you can make changes to your background image, which is the first image that a visitor is gonna see when they're directed to your site. If you only choose one image, then that's the image that will appear every time any visitor goes to your site, every time. If you choose multiple images, then every time a visitor goes to your site, it will rotate and it will refresh, it will change out. Um, in my case right now, if I scroll down here to background image, I have three images that are selected. I'm just gonna try to position my screen so you can see this best. And you'll see that they're selected because I have a little blue check mark next to them. In just a minute, I'm gonna show you, these are actually images that I imported from uh, a third party. I have a Shutterstock account. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually import images, but you don't have to do that. There are a number of images. If I keep scrolling down through this library, KV Core has loaded a ton of um, pre-formatted, user-friendly, website-friendly images that will all work in that homepage background. And you can select one or you can select multiple. It's totally up to you. All you would have to do to choose or unchoose is just make sure that you're either clicking or unclicking on that little checkbox and be sure to save at the bottom once you've identified the pictures that you wanna use, okay? So you'll notice that there's, I think a good variety there, interior versus exterior, different color schemes, more traditional, more modern, with people, without people, um, and also highlighting maybe different parts of the country as well. So re remember, we're talking about a platform that's got an appeal and um, address the interests of agents across the entire country. Um, one of the things that I like to do, I really like importing my own images. And I like to kind of take it one step further. Sometimes I even like to make those images seasonal because I do feel like when a visitor comes to your site and they see a fall picture in the fall or they see a holiday picture, you know, in December or a snow picture in February, I think that that kind of maybe subliminally or subconsciously lets the client know that you're up on your website, that it's current it's and that it's timely. Um, I, think I think that's important. That's important. If I could just ask everybody too to mute if you um, don't have a question or a comment too. Um, so let me show you how to go about doing that. If you scroll down below the list of um, preloaded images, Okay, you'll see this box here, how to upload your own image. So let me talk you through that. I'm actually logged into uh, my Shutterstock account. Again, I have a subscription because I do a lot with images. I do newsletters and other marketing materials uh, in coordination with a lot of team members. So this like 30 bucks a month makes sense to me, but there are plenty of sites that you can go to and download images for free. <clears throat> What's most important is that you wanna make sure that you are either leveraging a free site where the images are available for public consumption or that you're paying to have copyright rights to those images, okay? So I looked through Shutterstock and I was looking for an image. Remember when you look at your site, you're gonna have a large search box. You're gonna have your image kind of in the middle of the picture. So you wanna make sure that when you choose a background, you're not choosing something that's gonna kind of get lost behind all of that functionality on your website. So I kind of like this one here, this um, pumpkin image. Again, going with something seasonal and timely. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the image. Again, this is in Shutterstock. And if I wanna download it, what you need to know, regardless of uh, what platform you're coming from, is that there is an ideal size in downloading an image into KV Core. So I'm gonna to wanna to choose custom because that ideal size is not any of those pre-formatted sizes. And you might wanna write this down, make note of it. If you import your own images, you wanna go with 1600 pixels by 650. That's 1600 by 650. So what I'm gonna do in Shutterstock is I'm gonna do a, a resize and I'm gonna go ahead and click on custom size and I'm gonna set those exact parameters, 1600 by 650. I'm gonna resize it, and then I'm gonna download it. 
Always want to make sure that you're using JPEG images for your site. And then I'm going to download. Okay. That was where I downloaded it from Shutterstock. So now it's sitting in my downloads folder on my computer. Now I'm going to hop back over to KV Core and I'm going to click here in this big upload box. I'm going to find the image in my downloads and I'm going to highlight it and import it. Now, once I click on it and bring the image in, it's important that you click on this upload button. Otherwise, it's not going to save the image to that list above. Okay. Once I get that confirmation in the bottom left-hand corner, I can scroll back up and I'm going to find my pumpkin image in this list. I don't want to make anybody car sit, but there it is. Okay. So there's my image. Now notice what happens when I pull the image here. Um, it looks stretched and it looks like I uh, misformatted or you know incorrectly formatted the picture. That's what it's supposed to look like here. I'm going to show you. What I'm going to do is leave that image clicked and I'm going to remove the other three that maybe for now I just want this one seasonal image to appear as my constant background. So I have that one image clicked. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm going to hop right back over to my site and refresh it. And in real time, you're going to see the change with my new image. Okay. And now see how here it looks correctly proportioned to the site itself. Nothing looks smushed or stretched. Um, and again, none of the background, I can still appreciate the, yeah. the seasonal background without losing any of the functionality um, that comes with that top part of your page. Okay. All good so far? Okay. I'll take yes. no news as good yes. news. <laughs> um, so if anybody I, I has a question. I do have a quick question. I do have sure. a quick question. I have sure. um, a video as my background image, but it doesn't, and I do have um, some background images that are photos as well, but it doesn't seem to switch between the two. It, it just stays as a video. I, don't, I mean, if you're going to address that later, I just want to let you know that's a question out there. Sure, sure. There, there is a way that you can go ahead and add a video to your background, Leroy. I'm not sure. Have you? Oh, I've, I've done that. I've, I've done that step, but it doesn't. Have you? But to toggle back and forth, have you experienced any issue with the um, with the playback? Does it play um, back cleanly on your site? Oh yeah, it's very nice. Okay, yeah. good. All right, good. I don't think. I think it's kind of. Uh, one or the other, but that's definitely a question that I will, I don't think I'm going to have the answer today, but I'll follow up when I make sure that I get the answer. If you can move between still images and video, correct? Yes. Okay. I'll Thank find you. that out for you. Okay. Once you get through your um, homepage images, you do have the ability, if you have your own personal logo, to include that on your site. What you want to make sure of if you do that the EXP logo is already going to be standard on the site. So whatever image you upload here, you want it to be just your customized piece of the logo without okay. EXP there. Otherwise, once you import that image, it's going to duplicate the EXP, if that makes sense. Um, the other thing is um, you can, you do have the ability to request changing the color scheme. So the blue and orange will be the default. Uh, you can request from inside real estate. I know that the black is available, but I don't know that the white is available. The way that you can request that, that's not a setting that um, you can change, at least so far, not that, I've, not that I've identified anywhere. What you'll wanna do, just like we talked about last week with the help feature with KV Core, just go down to the bottom right-hand corner, click on send a message, and then start a chat to just request that your brokerage logo in the top left corner of your home screen be changed to either the black logo, the white logo, or if you need to change it back from black or white, black back to the blue and orange, okay? Um, as we move through now, there are gonna be a series of um, toggles for on and off features with our website. If you remember last week when we talked about setting up your profile, one of the things that I encourage everyone to consider is pulling in a lender partner to your website. If you have a lender partner and you've gone through those steps on your profile, 
to link that lender to your KV Core, then you're going to see this finance option is available to you on your website. If you don't link a lender, then this is not going to work. It's not going to be functional on your KV Core site. The reason I can have that a I question bring... on that as well. Sure. So um, I tried. I'm trying to get a, a lender involved. Um, there's some steps they have to actually open up a, a basic KV Core account. Yes. And the cost and the, and the question was cost. Um, do you know that's that? Great, yep, that's a great question. So if you wanted to go and have a lender added to the list of approved loan officers mm -hmm. through KV Core, all you have to do is fill out a form. You as the EXP agent, fill out a form to request they be added. There is no cost to the loan officer. The loan officer, um, once approved, just receives a link asking them to activate their account and set up their profile. Only mm -hmm. they can do that. They have to upload their photo, their biography, any links. So if they have a website link, maybe a mortgage application link, mm -hmm. they're going to have to build all that out into their own profile. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be able to select them from within KB Core as your lender partner. And then you can even take it a step further and you can set defaults as to whether every new lead that comes in is automatically shared with that lender, or you can choose at, you know, at will to pick and choose what leads you're going to share, you know, on a sort of a one-off basis, but there's no cost to the lender. Okay. So as I, I think the most important part of the conversation is making sure that you're choosing a lender partner that number one, you can rely on to deliver good service. Mm -hmm. And number two is going to work well with you to work on these leads. Um, mm -hmm. Anytime that you get leads to your site, you want somebody who's going to move quickly and act quickly to get engaged with the visitor to your site. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, Thanks. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have, have, can you... Can you have okay. one lender or can you add more than one? So you can, oh. at, at, currently you can only identify one active lender partner at a time. There's no. nothing that says that you can't change. Um, it's, it's not like you're locked in. So if I chose one person and then I um, wanted to make a change later, I could do that. But there can only be one at any given time. And what will happen with your site is you're going to, as I mentioned, you'll have this finance feature that will open up. And then the other thing that happens is there's a tab on your website called Our Resources. So if you see me click on that, Our Resources is going to be a lot of different things all in one place. If I'm a visitor to my site and I click on Resources, I have the ability to ask a question of the agent, ask a question of the lender, of the loan officer. I have the ability to, and we'll go over this uh, kind of second half of the class today, take a look at some of the custom pages that are linked okay. to my site or conduct a search. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, okay. functionality there. If you don't have a lender partner, then Thank understand you. that when your visitor clicks on this section of your site, the resources section, they're going to try to pursue asking the lending partner a question and it's not going to work. So if you're not using a lending partner, you may want to consider hiding this resource page, okay? I emphasize frequently with a lot of the different um, things that I cover with KV Core that you should try to experience your website or your registration process, um, receiving property alerts, a lot of different things that we're going to talk about. I encourage you to experience it as if you were a client because you what you want is for your client to come to your site and have a good experience, not be frustrated when things don't work. Um, and then remember too, we're a virtual brokerage. So what I tell people that means is that we we leverage technology really well. Okay? In my mind, it really has nothing to do with brick and mortar, has everything to do with um, leveraging technology in the best possible way. So you wanna make sure that things work the way they're supposed to. Yeah, no so this is for you. Sure. Yeah. Real quick. Um, yep. Can you send out the resource that I'm um, told well, the um, the document where the lender can that you can request for the lender? Where's that yep. document located? I did actually. I forwarded some things to you this morning when I saw oh, yes. um, when I saw your text message. So any links that I shared in the training last week, including that link for the lender, 
um, I did email to people who were asking for it. So if I uh, if I missed you and you need that, I'm just going to go ahead and stick my email back into the chat again, just to make okay, sure that you can you. get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. So it's a pretty easy process and it just takes a day or two usually to get that turned around and then get your lender added. Um, and I'll just yep. show you real quick for those, um, since it's uh, of interest, the, the, where, the place where you can check that is if you go up to the top right hand corner to your name and go to the lender section. That's where you'll be able to see whether your lender has been added. Um, and once they are, it's just like we clicked on the images for the home screen, it's gonna be like clicking on the lender to um, and saving it to open all those functional components of your site, um, which again, I think just adds to the robustness of the client experience, okay? The next couple of things, um, hiding millions mapped and hiding WCAG, I think those default to on, uh, those are like beyond my tech knowledge, but I'm going to tell you that I, I understand that when people have turned them off, it impacts the functionality of your site in a couple of negative ways, maybe small, but negative ways. So I just left those as toggled on to hide them. Next couple, um, if you look at hide office information, go back to the home page of the site and you scroll down um, to the very bottom, you'll notice that unless you have a licensed um, branch office, it's going to default to the Montclair office. You do have the ability to turn that information off. I tend to err on the side of compliance, um, which encourages you know disclosure of the brokerage information making sure that the public can access the broker if needed and so i tend to err on the side of leaving it there that's why i haven't turned that off you have the ability to hide a print flyer button that's associated with the search feature i'm not sure why anybody would want to do that um, i think if somebody's searching on your site the fact that they would want to print the flyer with property information is a feature you'd want them to have um, limited listing labels. For me, I'm content with the listing labels for these different uh, widgets and sections. And I will tell you that there is another place where we can go and make edits if we want to. That'll come at the end. So I'm not going to toggle that on here. Uh, if we continue to scroll down, let's take a look and talk for a second about phone and lead registration. Okay. There are a couple of different rules of thought when it comes to phone. If you remember from last week, we talked about when you set up your profile, if you have a visitor go to your site and they click on search and they're gonna go ahead and start their um, property search, they're gonna see your phone number here, right? So you wanna make sure that they have multiple ways to get in touch with you. But then the question becomes, how do you gather that leads information? Well, you need to what's called here, force lead registration. And you can determine at what point you require your visitor to register to continue with their search. I have mine set to normal, which I think is, um, it's probably certainly the most common. And I, I think it's a fair, you know, it gets people sort of engaged in the search. And then after they've viewed one property, it will prompt them to register with their information on the site. Okay, you do have other options where they don't have to register at all, or they can register up front without even seeing one property in their search. I, I leave mine at normal. Deanna, uh -huh. if you put normal and they choose not to, are they then not able to continue searching? Correct. Okay. Yep. It's going to prompt them in order to be, for them to be able to continue to see their results. They're going to need to register. Okay. Thank you. Now, sure. The um, that sort of leads me to the second piece of that, which was right above with mandate phone. If you asked me a year ago, uh, I would have said follow maybe KV Core's standard recommendation to select no and not require a phone number at registration. That way, the only thing that the client has to provide is an email. And keep in mind to your question, Philippa, it doesn't technically have to be a valid email. There just has to be a value entered. Um, same thing with phone number too. Um, and there are plenty of people who know that and just sort of enter a value in order to be able to proceed. So if you asked me a year ago, I would have said, okay, KV Core recommends not collecting phone number because you're more likely to get 
a person to register than if a phone number were required. The challenge with that is that if you're really going to leverage KV Core as a fully functional tool, not only to generate leads, but then also to maintain contact with those leads through campaigns and text messages, and to, to try and engage clients in, in phone conversation, engage leads in phone conversation, you need the phone number. Um, so if you wanted to maybe start out with a no, but I think ultimately, you know, I'm at the place too, where from my team standpoint, we are doing some lead generation with EXP. So I require the phone number. It's an important component of our campaigns. We build out, like I said, texting and phone call tasks um, to connect with new leads that come in. So I have this toggled on, okay? So those are things that you wanna think about. Again, you wanna try to find that balance between not turning a visitor off, but making sure that you're getting information so that you can actually converse in some form with that lead, okay? Next thing is a website title, and there's also gonna be a homepage meta description. Website title, you're gonna be entering this tagline in two places on these settings buttons. Um, first one, if I go back to my site, you'll see right here in this uh, color bar. Uh, and for me, I zone into a very specific geographic area. I tend to work a very small area because I do a lot of other things um, besides actual production. Um, so however you want to advertise yourself and your services, think about something, not a lot of words, right? You only have this one line. So something short, succinct, but um, kind of tells the visitor a lot about you all at the same time. Um, you have the ability to identify a meta description, which is going to tie back to your Facebook page. Um, I don't spend a whole lot of time on this component. I would say from your website build, spend more time on the website title than the homepage, the meta description. Okay. Um, ask unit defaults to on. So I leave that. Um, that gives the visitor the ability to ask a question or to send you an email to try and reach out to you if they want to contact you. I leave recruiting text uh, here, and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that um, in a couple of minutes. Another component of functionality in your site that if you have any interest at all in agent attraction, it's uh, understand that you actually, in addition to your KV Core site for production purposes, for home selling purposes, you actually also have a website for career purposes that's personal to you. So I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so let's take a look at a custom header, a custom header, custom body, and custom footer, okay? Um, with these three components, I custom header, I leave alone. Um, there was some additional functionality that got built in when we started doing our lead generation. So I leave custom header alone to whatever um, KV Core, whatever inside real estate, whatever inside real estate set up for me. Okay. For custom body, I don't, I like to look at the website and use the widget features here. If I didn't want to use the widgets or wanted to add some custom component, I could do that here in custom body, and it would appear in this section of the site. Um, I think that kind of is another section that maybe is a 201, not a 101 conversation. The one thing that I do suggest that you think about is making a change or maybe customizing your footer a little bit, depending on where you are in the country and what your state compliance requirements are. You know, in the state of um, New Jersey, it's very specific that if you are going to advertise your cell phone number, you also need to make sure that you are providing the office number as well. So for me personally, I want to make sure that wherever there's a functional component of my site, that it's my cell phone number that's sort of front and center. Like I just showed you a second ago on that search page, um, you saw my cell phone number there. But I also want to make sure I'm maintaining compliance. So at the bottom, in the footer, which is this uh, sort of compliance section of the homepage, 
I went and added this additional line to make sure that I was disclosing the broker's phone number, okay? The other thing in some states, I think Texas is an example, where you actually have to provide links um, to certain disclosures that relate to selling real estate in that state. This is where you would copy and paste the links with any verbiage or direction and save it. And that's where it would appear at the bottom. So if you're viewing this and you're outside of, you know, typical, you know, most of who we're talking to today is New Jersey and Pennsylvania. If you're outside of that, just make sure you understand your own state's compliance. And if there are things, requirements that you need to incorporate into your site, this is the right place to go to put them in the footer. Uh, Diana? Uh-huh. Um, do you have your cell phone number on the website or do you have a KV Core uh, cell phone number? So that's a good question. There are two different things that um, are in play. You can choose to, do you have your own smart number, Sarah? I'm not yet. I'm going to get one. Get one. Okay. So one of the things that we did talk about was having that personal smartphone number, which I think is really good for lead generation. But from a um, from like a broader standpoint, I use my cell phone here. This is my own personal cell phone number. It's totally up to you if you would want to use your smart number there or your cell phone number there. Got it. <clears throat> Thank the you. one thing that I, sure. The one thing that I will mention, we did talk about last week that I'll just sort of reiterate is if you're in your profile and you scroll up to the top, when you edit your profile, you do have the ability to enter multiple phone numbers. I encourage you to only choose one of these three numbers and then click show one site. If you click multiple numbers, then none of them will appear. Okay, so you wanna make sure that whatever method you most prefer, that you only enter that one number in your profile. Okay? Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in addition to the, the header, the footer, we were at uh, here, coming into conversion code. Conversion code is another area, we're talking next level. In this case, you see that I have content here in conversion code, and that is because I am participating in Making It Rain, which is an EXP lead generation program. Inside real estate, in conjunction with EXP, put that code there. I didn't put that code there, so I'm not going to touch that. I don't, I don't want to um, alter my, my functionality, but they set that up. That takes us to the custom chat widget. So let's go back, take a look at my homepage. If you have a Facebook business page, you have the ability to set up this little chat widget. You'll see it sort of bounces up from the bottom right-hand corner where a visitor to your site can recognize it, right? Who doesn't recognize Facebook? Can recognize it, click on it, and begin chatting with you all through Messenger, okay, right from your homepage. So how can you set up that functionality in your site? It's actually very easy, um, so you shouldn't be intimidated by it. What you want to make sure you do is, while you have this page open, open another tab and go to your Facebook page. From Facebook, you'll want to make sure that you go to your business page, okay? And I, as we talked about last week, Try where you can to separate your business social media presence from your personal social media presence. So I'm going on the presumption that you have a business page, okay? From your business page, you're going to want to scroll down under the manage page section. You're going to want to find settings, okay? Under settings, you're going to go to messaging. And now within the messaging menu, you're just going to kind of move down towards the bottom of the list of options, and you'll see add messenger to your website, okay? You'll click on the get started button. Now, there, there's a couple things that I can't talk you all the way through because I've already done this, but you're gonna be able to copy and paste your website domain. So that's why it's important when you go through the setup process that you have your website open so you can easily copy and paste your website URL right here into this field. You can set up some, you know, make some changes on color scheme and so forth. And then ultimately here, I'm gonna publish. When you get to the end, when you set it up for the first time, it should give you the option to copy it. You're gonna copy the code. 
You're going to come back over to KV Core and you're just going to right click and paste it right here into this custom chat widget um, box. And once you do that, hit save. Go back to your website and refresh and you should right away see that the plugin is now functional and working. If you are not active on Facebook, if you're not religious about Messenger, um, about checking it and, and leveraging it as another communication tool, then you may not want to even set this functionality up. It's important that, um, and believe me, I speak from experience, it's important that you want to make sure that you are actively checking um, all the places where you can be receiving messages so that you don't miss any client uh, communications, okay? Um, I don't change anything here with the Facebook username. You'll notice that if I just pulled it in exactly the way I just showed you with the widget, that when somebody clicks on it, it's automatically going to reference my name because that's the name that I used on my Facebook business page, okay? So I leave this Facebook username blank. A couple of other sort of housekeeping items. You do have the ability to add an additional office address if you wanted to include something other than Montclair. Again, it's your responsibility to make sure you're handling all the compliance requirements um, from the state's real estate commission wherever you're located. So if you're adding another office in New Jersey, you wanna make sure that that is a licensed branch office. Then you can go ahead and add it and hit save, okay? There will be the phone number for the brokerage um, should be preloaded. That should have been set up when you first had your account activated. And same thing with email. Again, these are compliance driven items, so you should not remove them um, or delete the contents from those fields. OK. Um, now we're going to get into some testimonials and we're going to talk about testimonials in two different places today. The first place I just want to mention it is here. Only because if you don't have Zillow reviews, then you might want to toggle this to off. I don't have a Zillow profile, so I don't use Zillow testimonials in my site. But it's important to know that I have seen multiple agents, not just it happened with me, but it also happened with uh, some team members that I've been working with. If you go down to this section here where it says connect Zillow reviews, an email address that wasn't mine and wasn't anybody that I recognized was populated here. I think that's either a KV Core issue or a Zillow issue. So what you absolutely need to do at a minimum is make sure that you either replace the email address that's there with your correct EXP email address, or you can take out the email address and put in your Zillow screen name here. Once you do that and hit save, then it'll remove that other profile. What was happening is that, um, and I'll just show you real quick, if you go to the website, once you have your testimonials activated, and like I said, we're going to go over how you do that today, but once you have testimonials activated, if your Zillow profile is set up, it will pull in over here to the right-hand side. So let me see. I think, um, show you on Gail's. I think Gail is an example of someone who has, okay, so here's what it looks like when Zillow reviews pull in on the right-hand side of your testimonials page, okay? So because my profile had some random person's email address here, I was getting content here that wasn't mine. They were reviews on a completely different agent and not even an EXP agent. That's why I think it has something to do with either KV Core or with Zillow, okay? So make sure that you check that when you're doing some of this stuff on your own site. Deanna, so on yours, if you scroll up just a little bit where it says testimonials, so you actually hide yours? I hide you mine because I don't have a Zillow profile. So I don't do uh, Zillow Premier. And so I only am pulling in, if you look at my site, I'm pulling in uh, testimonials from... Um, I enter them manually, which I'm gonna show you how to do today. You do also have the ability to leverage like an integration platform like Zapier, for example. If you have a Zapier account, you can link your Google business reviews into your KV Core account as well. But, but from what I understand right now, there's still not a functionality 
built directly into KV Core to let those two things speak. You need some sort of bridge to get you there. Um, and like I said, Zapier is an example. It's not the only one. Um, but so what will happen is if you link your Zillow testimonials or if you use an integration platform like Zapier to link your Google business reviews, they're going to automatically feed into your KV Core and appear on your website. Okay. Um, you do have the ability, if you have a team site, to include child testimonials so that um, team leader, team member testimonials can be interchanged. I have that turned off. Okay. Uh, this is the place where, um, to Leroy's point before, if you have a YouTube video that you want to incorporate into your background. So we go back to the home page where we saw I have still images. If you wanted to use a video instead, then you would just want to take the video ID, not the full URL, just the video ID, and enter it here and save it. I'm going to double check to Leroy's question. I believe it's sort of a one or the other. So if you have a background video, then your homepage is going to only show the video. It won't go back and forth between still image and video. Okay. Um, there are a couple of other just sort of minor functional components, like small sort of visual um, toggle on and off features here in this section. Um, we already talked a little bit about using the full custom width of the screen. And so you'll see in my case that I do. So here's one place where you can toggle that on and off. You can also choose to hide the chat widget if you don't want it to appear. Maybe you've decided that um, you've given up Facebook for the month of October. So you temporarily want to hide your chat widget. You can go ahead and toggle it to hide it. And then you can always come back later and unhide it without having to completely remove you know, the functionality and the steps you took to set it up to begin with. You also have the ability to change some color schemes in your search feature. So if I click on search, when you see these references here to black color or to primary color, it's talking about these colors here, like in the search area. Notice how these are um, black. That's what that's referencing, okay? So you can choose to use black or use primary. And this works a lot like the other functions that we've looked at. You can toggle it on or off, swing back over to the website and refresh and see if you like the appearance, see if you like how it looks, okay? One thing that I'll mention while we're here on the search page, because I did mention it last week too, it's really important that you double check that you have the correct MLS tied to your KV Core account. It will certainly impact you here in your search bar. Uh, if you have the wrong MLS, if I were trying, and this happened to me initially, um, I think I was tied to Garden State. My MLS, my primary is bright. So I'm like, feverishly trying to search Marlton properties and couldn't for the life of me figured out why I wasn't getting any results. Um, well, that's why, because it was pulling from the wrong MLS. The way that you can check that is if you just go back to your homepage, scroll all the way down to that compliance section that we talked about, and make sure that the disclaimer that appears here is indeed your primary MLS. Okay? Diana, yeah, um, I'm yep. sorry. Can you only You're have one MLS? You can only have one? So there was a recent change, um, fairly new, I want to say within the last three to six months, where if you have an individual KV Core account, you can now add, I think, a second and possibly even a third MLS to your account. But there is a process for that, and you do have to fill out a form. I did, um, in the email that I sent that included like the link to the YouTube channel and the link to the lender. Um, request form, there is also a link in there that gives you more information about adding additional MLSs if you wanted to do that. It gives a little bit more detail and also gives you the form that you need to fill out to request that. That's not something that you can do yourself, something that you have to request in combination with EXP and KB Core folks. Okay, thank you. And I didn't get that email, but I put it in my in the chat. So if, if I could get it, that'd be great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me just, you know what, um, can you just make sure to put your, you, you put your email address in the chat? 
just stick your email address in the chat again, just so I make sure that I have the correct one. Okay, thank you. Sure. Diana, mm -hmm. is there any extra cost to add the extra MLSs? Um, I, I believe. Yeah. I think it was like, what, $25 or something? I don't know about the actual cost. For each I one? Know. I Yeah, for each one. I don't know if there's a cost. That's a really... I'll find out for sure, Sarah. Thank you. I'm pretty sure there's a cost because the same thing happened to me, Deanna. When I first signed up with KB Core, they had me with Mammoth MLS and I kept, I wanted to get the Middlesex and they kept thinking it was, I think it's called an add-on. I want to yes. say, and this goes back a little while ago, maybe 120. They kept, they wanted to charge me more when I was just trying to get back to just the Middlesex. So okay. unless something has changed. I believe it's maybe about like 150 for every additional MLS. Okay. I didn't think, I thought it was that expensive before they changed things up about six months ago. I That's think good. there is a cost, but I don't think it's what it used to be. That's good. Um, yes. And now- oh, That's expensive though. Because 150 I'm, is expensive, yeah. certainly. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I'm a member of four MLSs. If I'm going to add all four, that's a budget. Yeah, I have yeah. three. And that's why. And so, like I said, initially they put me up as Mammoth. And I was like, well, I should keep it because I have Mammoth. But then it was just too expensive for all of them. So that's good if they did a change, though. Thank you. Yeah. And that was yeah. monthly? Was, oh, yeah. I, I don't even know what it was at the time. At the time I was so, and I'm still so new with KB Core. I didn't really even know what they were talking about. I was just, my main goal at the time was just to get it, my main, you know, CJ primary done. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. They were really fast though. They said, I went into that chat where you said, go down to the KB Core chat. Mm -hmm. I told them what happened that they never actually fixed it since last year. He immediately sent a link with a form in there and I was able to fill it out and copy and paste the EXP information into the form. And I got a, they sent it into MLS to Central Jersey and the next day I had a reply. So now I just got to make sure. Well, I, I, they got it. I just don't okay. know if they fixed it yet. So I, I got to check that today. Yeah. Okay. But they were perfect. very fast. So to the points that everyone is making, the first thing you absolutely want to make sure of before you talk about adding additional MLSs is, is make sure that your primary is properly reflected. I do see it happen very frequently that the wrong MLS is feeding here, and it will affect so many other components, not just of our training, but of the functionality of your site. Like I said, if, if you're talking about you know, selling homes in Somerset County and, and bright MLS is, is feeding into your site. People are going to be really frustrated when there's no search results in Somerset County. Okay. So if you find that this here on your footer is not your primary, the way that you address that is you go back into KV Core and you start here with the help chat. Click on send us a message and get a conversation going, getting get a chat started. As I mentioned last week, anytime that you go there, it's great because you start the conversation here, but you don't have to babysit it here. If it takes them a little while to get back to you or they tell you they need a little time to research it, that chat conversation is going to continue with email. So you're going to get email messages as well as updates right here in this chat window. So you, if you have things to do, if you have appointments um, or it's the end of the day, you can just start the conversation, walk away from it, and just monitor your email to see how things progress and getting your issue resolved. In the case of the wrong MLS, you would want to go here and, and, you know, to Yvette's point, let them know, I should be pulling in Bright MLS, it's pulling in Garden State MLS, please, you know, address. They may ask you to fill out a form just validating your MLS. And then they'll work to get that corrected. That's not something that you can do from any of these settings that we're reviewing. I will go back and revisit the cost um, because one of the things too, if you were, if you kind of set yourself up under the old format with the add-ons for um, layering one additional MLSs, if there's a better program now with a better cost, we want to make sure that you know about that too. So I'm not sure if that's in play here or not, Rochelle. Um, but for you and for Sarah and for others, I'll follow up and make sure that I get the cost information. Thank you. Thank sure. you. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. So, uh, so again, these sort of 
last few toggle buttons here as we um, get through this section. I don't spend a whole lot of time on these, but they do have slight uh, visibility impact on what your site looks like. And you can go back and forth and play with those, but I'm not really going to spend um, much more time on them. What I do want to mention here in the next section with navigation and then below navigation, we're going to get into um, the carousels is that you have the ability, if you look at your site, you have the ability to change what some of these labels say. So if you don't like the words search, sell, finance, if you wanted to use different labels, this is where you can do that under this section here called custom navigation. You would simply go into the field, change it to whatever label you wanted it to be, whatever name you wanted to give it and click save. And you can do that with any of them. For me, I'm fine with the defaults. So the only thing that I changed was um, I think the we're hiring label either says it either defaults to we're hiring or um, I can't remember what the other one might be, but I personally wanted to go with join EXP Realty. And remember, I said that every one of us, when we have a KV Core account, we actually have a website that's personal to us for the purpose of agent attraction. The way that you can test this is if you just open a new window in your browser and you're gonna just start typing your name exactly as your email address appears from EXP. So in my case, I'm Deanna Fay with a hyphen brown dot EXP Realty, if I can type today, dot careers, okay? So again, it's my name. I use, you have to keep the hyphen, dot exp realty dot careers. And once I click enter, it's going to bring me to the join app, which you should, you know, see is familiar when you yourself filled out the join app. So you can direct an agent here. But what's really cool is that if I just move this information. Look what happens at the bottom, the very bottom of the screen. You can see that it's got my name and my cell phone number there. So you have the same ability to include a join site with your name and your phone number. So what you'll do is you'll simply take this URL up in the top search window, jump back over to your KV Core, and you can stick it right in this hiring link and save it, okay? So that gives you that additional functionality. So if you're talking with, um, this means that you can give out your website for so many different things. If a client wants to search, you can send them your website for search. If a client wants to give a testimonial or you'd like to solicit a testimonial, you can send them the link to the testimonial page. Now you can send them the link to the careers page if you want to direct them to fill out the join app. So there's so many things that you can do. The other I'm sorry, thing can, that, can you just do that one more time real quick? Because I course. got confused on the link that you're using. Like, do they automatically put one in there for you? So you automatically, if you open a new browser window right now, so let's test it out. So it's Yvette Horn, right? H-O-R-N-E? Yes. Dot exp realty dot careers. Okay. I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So now see what happens. I have, it's the same join site, the same exp site, but now it's got Yvette, it's got your information at the bottom of it. So if, if you wanted this to be the link on your site, you would simply go up to the top, highlight Put it this. in the hiring yep. link. Copy That's it. exactly right. Hop back over to KV Core and you'll paste it here into the hiring link and save it. All right. so I just was that? confused yeah. about how we even had the career. I'm like, who put that together? I didn't yeah. even know that we had that. You don't even know it's there, right? And it, no. it is there and very few people know about it. Um, but then the way that that works, how that again, translates to your site is under the more, um, drop down, you will see that there is a join EXP Realty link. Okay. So now when they click on that, they're going to get the join app. They're going to get the join app with your phone number on it. Just another small touch. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, we're going to talk, I'm going to kind of table the discussion on custom pages for a second because there's a better um, place to show you how that works, but it's a really cool feature. 
Um, so I do want to spend a couple of minutes on that. Just a couple more things where you do have the ability to toggle on and off. So if there are features that you like or don't like, you can turn them on or off. In terms of the carousels, this is going to be another personal choice. So if you look, if you scroll down, it's going to be below your testimonials, um, below your widgets. You're going to get to these carousels. And it's just like what you would think, you know, horses on a carousel where you can toggle through and the list sort of rotates around, okay? You have the ability to decide which categories you wanna go ahead and have visible on your site. So in my case, you see just listed, just reduced. But take a look, you have the ability to say um, up to three different carousels. So I can choose my listings, I can choose open houses. So let's say I choose open houses here and save. So I have open houses just listed and just reduced. Okay, so now let me go over to my site and refresh. Um, there is gonna be um, a slight sort of, um, depends on the wording. If you look at my listings, that's gonna be just your listings. If you look at our listings, that's gonna be EXP's listings in whatever um, MLS area you are attached to through your KB Core. So I have just listed, just reduced, whoops, did I, and open houses, there it was at the top, okay? You can move them around. So if you wanted to change the order, just simply change the order um, from the drop down in the way that they're presented. You can also um, customize. Customization in this section is definitely like a level 200 conversation, but you could even go so far as to build out a search so that if you wanted to highlight just waterfront properties or just 55 and over properties, or um, maybe you do a lot with investors and wanted to somehow highlight um, fixer uppers or flip properties, okay? There are things that you can do, but again, our goal today is to just really get your toe in the water of personalization, that sort of next level, okay? Um, Google Analytics, this is associated with my lead gen. So again, I'm not touching anything there. Um, gonna leave that alone. Agent roster, that's gonna have to do with whatever um, team or office you are associated with. If you only want, in this case, this is my own personal account, not my team account. So I hide the agent roster so that I'm the only agent that appears on my own personal site, okay? The other thing I just want to mention, I think this is, we're coming to the end of this um, huge list of options, but remember that tagline that we talked about that appeared towards the top here, okay? What you want to do is just simply repeat it down here. The tagline gets entered in two different places because it's serving two different purposes. The verbiage is the same. In one place, it's to make sure that it shows up here on your website. The other place has to do with SEO. So you want it to be consistent where we entered it here and where we entered it close to the top, stick with the same tagline, okay? Last few things that I just wanna talk about has to do with um, the listing information that pulls in. If you are very specific in the type of work that you do or the type of listings that you want to appear on your website, you can shrink down those options. Let's say I want to go ahead and add the coming soon and just leave all listings, all listing options as appearing. But you have the ability to uncheck, to um, shrink down the results, the listing results that appear in your carousels, okay? Um, there are a couple of other sections in here with scrubbing, with manual listings and with polygons that I leave turned off. Again, have to do with some functionality that I've gotten mixed results on. So I choose not to turn any of those on. When it comes down to sorting results, you have the ability when somebody's looking at the carousel or somebody's looking at their search results to see, uh, to tell KB Core how to sort those results. I like to do it by days on the website so that a client or a visitor will see newer listings first. Okay. 
you also have the ability to change the display so that if you prefer, prefer to map a grid or a list, you can make those choices here as well. The one other thing that I'll just mention real quick, because again, it goes to client experience. I tested this out a little bit. One of the things that I wanted to be able to include on my search uh, feature, if you go into more filters, I wanted to include the ability for a visitor to identify the school that they were interested in. Initially, I did school district because if you are here in KD Core, all I have to do, so let's say I was interested in doing a school district as an additional filter. If I start typing school district, then I can look through the dropdown to find school district and it will be there. The problem is, is that, like I said, experience what the client would experience. When I picked school district and then tested how that worked on my website, what I learned was that school district was a numerical field and nobody's searching for homes. I mean, you're gonna pull a thousand people and 999 of them are not gonna know the school district number. They're gonna know the school district name or the school name. So that's why it's important that you test these features before you walk away from them. You can easily change them back. So what I did is rather than do school district, I added uh, feature fields for elementary, middle school and high school so that you can click on the dropdown. And again, notice on the dropdown, these are actual names of schools, not numbers. Okay, so that sort of takes us to the end of the initial screen. So we just worked through all of these customizable options to get some of the look, feel, and functionality going in our website. Are there any questions on that, on those components so far? We probably have another 15 minutes or so of things that I just wanna make sure we include today. I'm gonna have to watch the recording again. <laughs> yeah, you zipped through the last uh, like 10 minutes pretty fast. The, 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 the last components that have to do with the carousel um, and the search functionality. Those are definitely things that go back and watch it, but then you're going to have to play with it. And you're going to have to think about your business and what sort of makes sense for the clients that you're driving to your site. But I think what's most important that you understand with just about everything that we've looked at so far is that you can't break anything other than the one or two places where you might see code inserted that you don't want to tamper with. Other than that, you know, feel free to change things and try things that at the end of the day, you feel like there is something that you're getting the benefit of a personal website that looks different from, from your neighbors. Okay. That's sort of what yeah, I want to make sure to drive them. Yes. Uh, I usually, I mean, I have a lot to do. Like I'm trying to, I have to set up this whole thing and where do I look at recording videos? Like the like, let's say you have previous videos and then I want to go back and look into it. Will I be able to or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we post all of the videos, um, the training videos from these Wednesday sessions on a YouTube link. So if you just go ahead and drop your email into the chat, I will go okay. ahead and make sure that you get a copy, um, a link to the YouTube channel. I can also, let me see if I can include it here too. I can... Um, I yeah, I have not attended okay. any of these sessions and I need to work on many things. So probably I'm like, okay, let me just start. And uh, and some of these to two are, some of these are definitely kind of a the good, like start and stop the video, go and do it for yourself and then, and then move on to the next piece. But okay, when we get to the end, I'll try to make sure I don't want to take up time now, but I, I do want to drop the chat in the link, or excuse me, drop the link for the YouTube channel in the chat. And then I will also make sure um, to email it out afterward if you're sticking your email in the chat now. Yeah, um, I'll do that. I'm driving, but as soon as I pull over, I'll uh, type in my address. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Um, just make sure you're safe. Um, <clears throat> sure. A couple of other things then that I just wanna make sure that we cover and that I introduce you to. And it's right now we are in Again, just as a reminder, we went to Website Manager, and then we spent all of our time so far in this Website Settings. 
Okay. Now where I want to direct you is to this button here from Web and IDX from the website manager. We're going to go here to um, website manager, site content, blog, and embeds. These three things in here. Real briefly, I just want to show you something in embeds. If you are a QR code person, if you use QR codes on your physical mailers, if you have a car magnet that you use your QR code, um, you know, if you put something on your business card, you have your own personal QR code associated with your website and your KD Core account. So this is where you would find that QR code if you needed it. Okay. Again, that's going to be under Web and IDX, under Website Manager, go to Embeds. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about under site content. Yeah. That's... Three. Comp yep. I'm sorry. So that under embeds where their QR code is, what does that, that brings us, brings people back to our, our EXP site? Your EXP website. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So again, if you, um, it's, and it's a good, again, you're, you're already paying for this with your $85. So you know, maybe you're trying to drive traffic to your site. Maybe you're trying to, maybe you're investing in a physical postcard program, right? And you can uh, institute some sort of call to action on your postcard program by getting people to go visit your website and register. And maybe they're, I don't know, maybe they're registered to receive a prize or to, to become part of your, you know, weekly newsletter or whatever the case may be. But some sort of call to action, leverage this QR code, because then if you're sticking it on all of your postcards, you're going to be able to gauge how many people are taking you up on that call to action just by them clicking on it and registering with your site. So definitely something good to know exists. A lot of people don't know that it's there and it is. I, I have one that I, I, that I pay for. I mean, it's not really expensive, but it's nice to have one that's for free. Nice so. to have one that's right for $85 that you're yeah. already getting. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Okay, so site content. Uh, a lot of people, you know, it's, testimonials are super important that, in the business that we're in. Having the reviews of your clients, of vendors that you work with, other agents that you work with. We've talked about how you can set up and make sure that your Zillow reviews are feeding in. Uh, and we also now are going to talk about how you can uh, copy and paste, set up manually testimonials. It's important that you realize that testimonials are not going to appear on your website. Let me head back up to the top. It's going to come under the more section. You are not going to see testimonials appear here until you have entered your first testimonial. So you want to make sure that you do this. You're going to, again, go from KV Core, Web and IDX, go to site content. And to simply add your first testimonial, you click on the add button. It's really easy. You literally enter the name of the person who wrote it and you can be, you know, be respectful of privacy, make sure that you have permission to publish the information if you only maybe use last name initials, whatever the case may be, but you can just copy and paste the verbiage of the testimonial right here and click add. Once you do that, it will be added here in the testimonial section of KB Core. From there, you wanna make sure that you toggle it on. As soon as you do that one time, so paste it in, save it, and toggle it on, then your website will have this testimonial functionality. And then what you can do, what I strongly encourage you to do, is make sure that you're using this link, either the day of closing, the day before closing, or at worst, the day after. But I encourage you, don't wait to solicit a review. Try and get your client in that moment of euphoria when they've you know, gotten to the end of the process and are about to either receive keys or hand over keys, in which case they're hopefully receiving a check and they're happy campers and they're going to be happy to tell their story. OK, so when you send them this link, something that they should very easily click on either from their phone, from their computer, from their iPad, they can enter their name and information and hit submit and it's done. And now that testimonial will feed into your KV core site. Okay. So it's, it's going to get that functionality going. And then if you just continue to leverage the link, you don't have to worry about it feeding in anymore. Okay. So what if you want to preview it before it's posted? 
So you do have the ability when testimonials are feeding in through that link, you have the ability to come here to this testimonial page and turn them on or off. You also have the ability to completely delete them. Okay, this is going to be so you can't do that with the Zillow leads that are feeding into KV Core. You can't edit the Zillow content from KV Core. Now, you I can't speak to whether you can edit the Zillow content on Zillow in your Zillow login, but mm -hmm. when you are using the website functionality to collect a testimonial, you have the ability to either, turn, like I said, turn it on or off or remove it, or even um, if the English, if a word is misspelled, I mean, I, I would say just from a, you know, ethical standpoint that you want to do minimal edits, but, um, you know, if, if you want to be able to correct a misspelling of a word or something, you do have the ability to go in and edit the testimonial and update it and save it, okay? So that's testimonials. Make sure that you get at least one. Um, to get that started and to open that functionality so you can start to gather more testimonials from your clients. The next section under site content is service areas and SEO. This is important because if you look at your homepage, scroll down towards the bottom, you're going to see this section here, areas that we cover. This will, I think, essentially pull in every town in your MLS, and hopefully it's your MLS, your primary unless you change it. And this is where you would go to change it under service areas and SEO. What you can do if you do wanna make a change, if you don't want the um, areas you cover to be that broad, you can remove all of the areas and then start from scratch. The way that you would do that is you just simply go up to this add field and let's say, um, let me think of a town, so find Mullicale. So you'll notice I started typing Molica Hill, a town in South Jersey. I can pull in, I can look for a neighborhood, I can look for the city, or sometimes it'll come up as an area, okay? From an MLS search perspective, I encourage wherever you can to select a city because from the, from the website, you'll notice that a client actually has the ability to click on these different towns then when you click on the different towns, you can actually perform a search. The search feature works much better when you've selected a town or a city as opposed to an area or a neighborhood, okay? But once you identify the, the place that you wanna add, you can simply highlight it and add it, and then it will be included in the list here. And it will also appear in the areas we cover component of your website. The one other thing that's important to think about here when you're adding those towns, a lot of people pay a lot of money for SEO, for search engine optimization. You do have some basic SEO built into your KV Core account and your KV Core site so that you can set it up. If, I, if you look here at my example with Bordentown Township, I added some keywords, homes for sale, houses for sale. So if somebody were searching Bordentown homes for sale, I'm hopefully going to increase the um, opportunity for me to appear higher in search results. Again, recognize that people pay money to get their name at the top of the list, okay, um, and to appear at the top of someone's search results. You're not paying for that here as an additional component. So this is just based on, you know, whatever basic SEO features KV Core has. But if you leave it blank, um, then you're kind of reducing the opportunity that you might connect with somebody who's actually in the home buying or home selling market. Okay, so I did something pretty basic, homes for sale, houses for sale. Um, but you can, uh, you can customize those keywords to whatever makes sense to you. In my case, when I, each time I added a town, in addition to adding the town, I made sure to add those keywords and saved it, okay? So that's service areas and how they appear on your website, and then trying to leverage some search engine optimization as well. The last thing I just want to introduce you to here, and this is probably going to take a little bit of thought, 
and definitely would be then one of the places that you'll probably come back and rewatch the video when you're ready. You can create custom pages. Now going, building on my theme, sort of being very central to Burlington County, what I decided to do on my site, if I take you back to the top, just to make sure you can see it, I built a collection of custom pages all around Burlington County. So you'll see here, I have a drop down that says Discover Burlington County. And then within that drop down, I have started to create individual custom pages that will take a visitor to a variety of town sites throughout Burlington County. Now, notice I still have when somebody clicks on one of those custom pages, it opens a new window. So it doesn't um, completely remove them or take them off of my website. It just opens a new window to direct them to that new link. So let's say that you wanted to do that and you wanted to add custom page functionality to your site. First, you want to think about you know, how you want to build that out um, and be creative. Think about how you market yourself. You think about your sphere. Think about what traffic you would be driving to your website. If you are into fitness, if you are into cars, if you are, um, if you feel that you have like a specialty niche with maybe the luxury market or do a lot with the investor market. Um, there are so many different ways that you can build out custom pages in a way that can be meaningful to the visitors to your site. So let's say that I want to go ahead and continue leveraging my Discover Burlington County theme. I'm going to go ahead and add a new page. So here from the custom pages section. So again, I'm in website manager, I'm in site content, and then I went to custom pages. So from here, I'm going to click on this green button, new page. A window is going to come up. I have to give a title to this new page. So I'm going to keep with my theme. Today, I'm going to do discover board in town. Okay. I tend to stick with the exclamation point. So again, I want to be consistent. When it says category for the new custom page, what it's talking about here is exactly this title. So in my case, Discover Burlington County. If you are creating your first custom page in the group, so um, the first time that I did this, I actually had to go here to the Create field and create the title Discover Burlington County. Once I did that the first time, any other town that I want to add to that grouping I can just go ahead here and you'll see it's available to me, Discover Burlington County, okay? So again, the first town that I set up, I had to create that category. And then once I created the first town, then Discover Burlington County became available to me for all my other additions. You have the ability to describe the contents of that page. I don't even use that. What I like to do is scroll down a little bit further and you're gonna find this URL here this URL um, link. So what I do is I go and find the town's website. Okay, so in this case, I'm looking at Bordentown City. I'm gonna highlight the URL and copy it, come right back to my custom page screen in KV4 and paste it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Now look what happened. It's added it to my list. Okay, it's at the top, Discover Bordentown. I can turn it on or off. I always have the ability to toggle it on or off. And now if I go to my website and I refresh it, now you'll see Bordentown has been added to my dropdown. So again, this can be just another level of functionality. You don't have to do it. But if you wanted to round out a visitor's experience, like I said, think about things that are meaningful to you. If you do a lot of work in your community, if you are involved with philanthropy, um, if, again, if you are interested in fitness or maybe you're part of, you like to run marathons and that's sort of you know, how you market yourself. Um, think about how you can build custom pages where visitors to your site can find bridges to other sites, to, to links, ideas, events, and so forth that you might have in common. This is just one more way that you can help you know, give a window to who you are as an agent and then deliver a meaningful website experience for those coming to your site. Yeah, okay. 
Mm-hmm. Quick question, please. Do you, yes. you get people's interests? Do agents put on their, I mean, like you said, fitness. So I'm a dietitian. I have a private practice. So I, if I linked it there, it would be um, compliance, you know, compliant. I can put anything I want there. Technically, you should be able to put anything that you want there. I would say um, in a case like that, only because what you're talking about is having you personally having a professional license as an agent and directing them to another site with a different professional license. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that I might suggest that you do in that case is that you run it past compliance and make sure they have no issue. And Um, that would be in that chat button? Um, so in, in this case, when I say compliance, I'm talking about EXP compliance, not KV core. So, um, and let me just put the, it would be, uh, I think it's. Cause if nutrition was just an interest, you couldn't direct them to anywhere, but because I have a, my yes. own private practice, is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Exactly. The, okay. Only because you are like you're talking about licensure mm-hmm. in in two different uh, areas. Um, okay, where you're required to get certification with the state. So in that case, but but generally speaking, like in my case, I'm just directing traffic to learn more about where I am marketing my services, Burlington County. So I'm not directing them to another site where I might have financial interest or investment in getting their business in something other than real estate. I think that's probably, and that's why I would say run it past compliance, just so you don't run into an issue later. But once you get their blessing, then certainly you can um, maybe, you know, to the point of like, if, if you're a runner and maybe being able to continually update your custom pages for links to different marathons that are being, or um, walk and run events that are being held throughout your service area. Um, that could be a great thing to do. If you are into cars and a lot of your sphere, you know, there's a, I've learned this through a member of my team. There's a, um, a huge following to car shows. So that's a great natural um growth opportunity for your client database. So one more way that you can, you know, draw traffic in and then maybe highlight different car shows that are happening by directing people to those sites um, as they come up on the calendar. Another great way, but there's there's just so many ways to be creative here. So just again, go back and think about how you present yourself and, you know, what content you want to be able to deliver to your visitors. Um, okay, sorry. let's see. If, if I, in case I, just in case I missed it, um, under the new custom page, there's a, a section for page content. And was there anything that you shared that I missed that would go in there? I, I, I understand so you, the um, the URL and um, categories title, but there's a a section for the content if you. So you can give a description. Um, so let's say if somebody were. Just minimize. Let, let's say somebody were looking at this drop down and they weren't sure what any of these pages represented. You could give a description in that section that would give your um, visitor sort of an idea of what they would experience when they click on that link. Okay. So maybe to the point of um, like if, if you did something like upcoming car shows or upcoming marathons, maybe what you might put in that description is the date of that particular event, um, that might be meaningful where somebody sort of scrolling through this list might find it helpful to see the dates before they start clicking to get, you know, directed over to those individual sites. That's just one idea, but um, depending on what you build out there, you may or may not feel the need to explain Mm -hmm. what each of those sites is, but that's where you could do it. So like what Philippa was talking about with her dietitian business, like wouldn't it, she could use that as like a blog, put that in like a blog on her site. And that's the last um, other component. I'm glad you brought that up, Yvette. Yes, because that's the one of the last things that I want to make sure that I mentioned today is that with your KV Core site, you have the opportunity to blog and you can cover absolutely anything in your blog. Again, think about overall, you should be seeing, as we've gone through all this, you should be seeing opportunity to build out a theme, right? To build your brand. 
in, in small but meaningful ways so that if you're doing things here on your website and then you're also doing them in your print materials and your email materials and sort of continuing with that branding with your open houses and, you know, your, your water bottles and your coffee mugs, you know, you're, you're building your brand in meaningful ways and blog is another great way that you can do it. So we just spent time on the site content button. The place where you would find blog is literally the blog button. Um, and I will, will tell you, and here I'm the perfect example of it. If you are not going to keep up on the blog, then don't do it. Just um, remove any blogs that you have and turn it off because I'm, I'm showing you what not to do. Um, I entered my first blog back in November, all because of the KV Core training. I'm not typically a blogger. Um, it's super easy to do. But I will tell you from a visitor standpoint, right? If if I come to a website and the last blog that I see is a year old, then it's not conveying the message that I want, which is that the, the site is current and fresh and real time um, and that I'm, I'm available in the moment. This might suggest to somebody subliminally that I'm not, okay? So in that case, I can just simply remove it here, okay? But I do wanna show you. Um, this functionality, which is why I'm not going to remove it in this moment. But the way that you um, enter a post, and again, it could be anything. It could be real estate related. If you do have an expertise in another field and you want to incorporate that into this, you know, I know even on my team, I have individuals who have, you know, they're entrepreneurs with multiple businesses. Do that. You can do that here. The only thing that I would caution you on that I think is a compliance question is again, if you are trying to direct clients to another site or to a service that you offer that is a paid service for something other than real estate, okay? That's where I, I would say, make sure that you're pulling in compliance and getting their blessing. Um, but you simply click on add a post, you give it a title, and then you just start typing away, okay? And then you can literally put the date and time that you publish it. So sometimes um, what you might decide to do, and I, I encourage this in a, a few different places in KV Core. I, when I type, um, I tend to edit and, you know, go back and rewrite sections. And, but I do it all typically within Word. That's where I feel comfortable, you know, like in a word processing tool. Multiple times I've screwed myself up in KV Core trying to create my content right from here, where I've either clicked on the wrong thing or ended up deleting my content and had to start retyping again. So what I what I would encourage anybody to do is to type everything outside of KV Core. If you're drafting um, newsletter content, I do this. If I'm drafting a blog post, I do this. I type it in either Google Docs or in Word, and then I simply copy and paste it here. What's really cool about the blog feature is that if you sit down once a month and you create, maybe you want to do a weekly blog or a bi-monthly um, or bi-weekly blog, you can create all your content in advance for that month and then simply add each blog post individually by giving it its title, copying and pasting the content, and then you can set the publish date as well. So that, like I said, if, if, if you have the discipline to be able to set this up, you know, maybe once a month or once a quarter, then it can run on autopilot until the next time that you're ready to go in and upload your next grouping of blogs. But it's a really um, great way to engage and again, give insight into who you are, what your interests are, what your experience, expertise uh, might be. And make sure that you're in some way driving that back to, to real estate in some way, it can be a very subtle, small way, um, but obviously you, they're coming to your site because you're a real estate agent. So you don't want to lose sight of that. Yeah, this is a uh -huh. dumb question. This is a dumb no question. No dumb questions. <laughs> I don't know, I've never blogged. I'm not a blogger. Um, so if we put something in the blog, we write. if we write something, we can share that to our other social media to get people to go back to, like, does this drive everything back to, our website again and I don't know does this help with e SEO and I guess I'm not sure like who 
it's only for people that are really looking at our site, right? If they're on there. So we kind of have to either push them to that site or it's just something they stumble upon. So it, it is on your website, but you do have the ability, if you notice here with the post that I have. Yeah, I want to read that. <laughs> I'm going to go read that later. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, it's, <laughs> Yeah, see, I kept it there so long that it now has become timely again. I just have to change the date to 2022. <laughs> If anybody asks, I'm actually a month ahead of schedule. Um, but what you can do is you you do have the ability once you enter a post to click on this little clipboard and or leverage this little um, share arrow here so that you can link it to your social media and you can copy and paste that link on your social media channels. Again, giving you the opportunity to drive traffic back to your website. So there are also things that you can do with blogging that again are a little bit beyond sort of level 101 where you can do certain things from an seo standpoint to help drive traffic to your site as well thank you so say that one more time if you click on the share with the arrow or the copy and you can paste it into your social media site what will yes. those people see they won't know to come back to your website though so they're going to get the link. So what you can do is, um, so in this case, my blog is about, um, you know, how to, like, like foolproof turkey recipe, like how to get a good turkey every time. That's like a $5, you know, trick. So I can take that link. I can go to my Instagram or my Facebook and say um, $5 guarantee on your next Thanksgiving turkey and stick the link. And then hopefully I've done just enough on my social media channel to say, ah, oh, Sienna up to. They're going to click on the link and now they're driven to my website. And hopefully if it's somebody who um, maybe doesn't know me yet or is just getting to know me, or maybe it's a client, or maybe it's, it's somebody who even is picking up on my social media because I'm sort of boosting my profile um, through Facebook advertising or Instagram posting, then I could be driving traffic to my website. And remember, as soon as I get somebody engaged in a search, I've set it up that after one attempt at clicking on a property, they're going to have to register. So that's the idea is that you're, you are trying to ultimately find ways to drive traffic back to your site because you want to engage people in a search. You want them to register. And then once they register, they're automatically going to be added to your CRM, become part of your database, and you're going to have the opportunity to start to build out a dialogue centered around their real estate needs. Does that can make I, sense? Can I make a suggestion? Sure. If, you're blog, if you're blogging about anything other than like a recipe or something, make sure it's accurate and you have a resource because there are people out there that will go out of their way to make a point of making you incorrect or finding a fault. Trust me, I've blogged before. And even if it's whatever, whatever it is about, just make sure that your information is accurate and you have a source to give out if somebody asks you about that information, that it's not just your opinion. Absolutely. I appreciate that very much. It, it was totally on point. You, and especially, you know, in our business, in so many aspects of our business, there are plenty of, of professionals who wait for the opportunity to point out a problem, whether it's compliance with your signage or the way you ran an open house or how you handled, you know, the bidding process or, or the content of your blog, right? Um, so you do want to make sure that you're crossing your T's and dotting your I's. And anytime you're putting any type of content out onto the web for public consumption, you do want to make sure that you're being responsible and accurate in what you're presenting. And exactly, Philippa, make sure that you have the sources to back it up. Thank you, Michelle, because that's a great point too, that if you wanted to leverage, there are resources that you can either find for free or that you can pay for that will feed blog content to you. So if, if that's not really your cup of tea, but you like the blog feature, but aren't really good or interested in developing your own content, there are sources that you have available to you on the web to be able to pull, um, pull content in. Okay. Can I ask one more question? I'm sorry. Of course. No, of course. If you're already blogging one area, can you just stick, 
can you just put link, can you link that blog or do you, do you know what I'm saying? So I have a blog on another place and it's automated because I pay for a service that does a lot of those automated blogs. Can I take those, direct them here? That's a really good question. Um, how do you, so if you're using a service and you're linking it to another site, Mm -hmm. Are you creating the link on the from the blog? No, it just feeds right or into my website. It feeds into your site. I guess I'll have to ask on the other end, maybe then. It it may be something on the other end, but I'm going to see if I can ask the question on mine too. So if you subscribe to a blog site and you want to be able to publish it automatically to multiple. Thank you. Sure. Okay. All right. The only other thing that I just wanted to make mention, um, because we really wanted to stay on like the level 101, not the level 201, but I did just want to mention that if you have an interest in this, at some point, I would be happy to maybe devote a class just to this. There is this one other section called site editor. I want to take you real quick back to um, Gail's website who I, I've showed you, you know, maybe a couple of times to give you some compare and contrast with sites. So remember how we looked at Gail's site and saw that the tiles were different, how I actually um, can see her photo here behind one of the tiles. Just a different look from what you saw on my site, which was a lot more of the sort of standard, um, you know, pick from the drop down kind of functionality. You can do that in the site editor but it is um, the first couple of times that you're doing it, it is a little bit um, tricky, I would wanna say, but not impossible. So I'd, like I said, I'd be happy to do a class on it if anybody ever wants to spend time on this. But so you'll notice when I first clicked on the site editor, it first looks like I'm at my site, but then when you scroll down, what you realize is that I'm actually in the edit mode and I have the ability here to swap out these photos. So if I wanted to leverage my Shutterstock account and pull in different photos, if I wanted to use my own photo like Gail did on her site, I could do that. Um, I could also change so that instead of having side-by-side -side tiles, I can just have one tile with a, a background image with the search uh, label and function on the top. There are a number of things that you can do from here within the site editor, but it's just a little bit finicky. So again, I think it a class would be worthwhile if somebody wanted to pursue that, to know how to remove images, replace images, change the text feature without completely turning the um, proportions of your site on its head. So I just wanna mention that that's there. The one good thing is that when you're making any changes, if you find that you've gone down a rabbit hole, as long as you don't hit that save button, you'll be just fine. <laughs> so you can always just exit out of the editor as long as you haven't hit saved, then any of the changes that you've started to make will not take effect on your site. Okay, does anybody have any um, questions? I know there are a couple of things that I'm gonna work on um, getting answers to, some great questions that I, um, I will follow up on. And by the time we publish the video, hope to have answers to. So if you um, want to make sure that you get the link when the video is available for today's session and you also want the answers to the questions we talked about today, just make sure you've already gone ahead and entered your email address in the chat. Deanna, I dropped the link in the chat already. I also emailed it to Kathy. Oh, fantastic. Is that for the leaders um, and training with all your past YouTube? Oh, yeah. oh, fantastic. Michelle, thank you so much for doing that. You're welcome. Um, it was trying to do too many things at one time to, to click and paste the channel link. So that's great. Thank you so much. You got it. Um, are there any other questions? Anything that you um, want to double check on or aren't sure about? You also, I've shown you my cell phone number a few times. Feel free to call me with any questions. You have my email address. Um, the only other thing that I want to mention, if there aren't questions about website stuff, is that uh, next week is EXPCon, so I will be away. There will be no Wednesday training next week, but when we resume on the 19th, we're going to be talking about CRM and your client database. If you want to get a head start and you're feeling ambitious, I encourage you from your EXP dashboard 
go into lead engine and then all lead engine tools, okay? From here, from lead engine, up in the top right-hand corner, you're gonna find bulk lead import. Don't get caught up in the process just yet. Uh, we will cover this and, and talk about this process in two weeks. But for those of you who wanna start organizing your contacts, you can come here and click on get started. And uh, actually, let me take you one step back. You can get the template in order to be able to start to build out your list of leads. You'll get it in a format that is conducive to a KB Core upload, okay? So if you have another CRM, if you have multiple places, maybe you have your cell phone contacts, plus you have, um, if you've been using another CRM like Follow Up Boss, or uh, maybe you have Zillow contacts and you wanna pull from all these places and be able to put them into one import template, you can get that template here from KV Core. Um, you can either go through Lead Engine or sometimes the easier place to go is under Support and Training. And if you go under the basics, um, you can find this import your leads. So again, I went from on the left-hand side, support and training, support docs, and then I went to import your leads. Here, you will find the video and the file. So if you need the file to be able to download, this is what you want to get to, the USA format. Just download this. You're going to make a copy of it into your either Google Docs or into Excel, just a place where you can start to build out your database. If this already has your eyes glazed over, don't worry about it. I think between, <laughs> between now and two weeks from now, what's most important is that you know where you're going to go to get your contacts. We will talk through this, but for some people who want to take advantage of the next two weeks and want a place where they can start to park all this information, this is where you can go to get the template so that you can copy and paste from all these other sources. Um, most important things to think about for today are making sure that you have a good first name, a good last name, a good email address, a good cell phone number, and hopefully a good mailing address at a minimum. There are plenty of more things that we can do to build out your database, but those are the five most important components. So again, first name, last name, email, cell phone, and mailing address. Okay, so again, we are going to spend a, a good amount of time. That's going to be our next session. Um, oh, good. And so to your question then on campaigns, we will actually be covering campaigns as well. Let me just mention what our schedule is so you know. Um, database will be on the 19th. Then we're going to take a break for a couple of weeks and make sure that we're focusing on business planning and budgeting. And then November is going to be all about, you know, now that you've gotten some of these things set up, how do you start using this tool? I love Core Present. I can't say enough good things about it. I really think it's great for CMAs. So we're gonna spend time on that in November. And we're gonna learn about all these other components, property alerts, market alerts, um, you know, seller um, property reports, seller value reports. And we're gonna talk about campaigns, how to create campaigns, how to leverage campaigns, how to modify campaigns. Again, letting the muscle and the automation of KV Core round out your business and keep you in front of people, even when you can't physically do it yourself. Okay, so good. All right, awesome. So if again, if anybody has any questions that they wanted to take offline, please feel free, you have my contact information. Otherwise, if you're going to EXPCon next week, I would love to connect with you. Um, it's crazy that we'd have to go to Las Vegas to be able to see each other in person, but let me know. Otherwise, I hope to come back with some really good KB Core information from there too. And we'll see each other in two weeks. I'll Thank grab you. everybody's email address and get you the links to anything that we talked about today. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, Diana. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Have, Have a, a great day, week. everyone. Take Have care. Have a good trip, all of you. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm.